Good morning, Mountview Church. It is good to see you in the house this morning. For those of you who are first-time worshipers with us, we are so glad you're here, and we trust you will receive a warm Montview welcome. We also welcome those of you who are worshiping with us on the live stream this morning. We welcome the naughty of, uh, naughty of Bulls Weber into the naughty of Bulls Weber, naughty of Bulls Weber into the pulpit this morning. Naughty is a resident uh, theologian in residence here at Montview Church and and other worshiping communities in Denver, and we are uh, delighted to have her in our pulpit. This morning, I also want to draw your attention to the new Lenten pyramids. There's a brief paragraph in your bulletin about the artistic process of um, the artist, member Eric Muller Gerard. He's an extraordinary um, artist, and um, we are so grateful to benefit from his gift um, of pyramids for this Lenten season. I think that's it. If you will rise, embody your spirit, and join together in the call to worship. We travel the road to Jerusalem. It will require that we give up so much. With grateful hearts, we journey together. Amen. In the season of Lent, we are given permission to walk into the landscape of frailty, our own and the world's. We are invited to face ourselves with honesty and turn to Christ in trust, seeking liberation from all that holds us captive. In humility, let us call to mind our sins and join in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, as we travel this Lenten journey, give us the sincerity to speak the truth of both our beauty and our brokenness. Remind us that we are made in your image and forgive us when we forget that image, hungering instead for that which does not satisfy clinging to that which does not give life, ignoring those who need our love. And in your mercy, give us renewal, reparation, resurrection. Amen. Friends, the good news of the gospel is that God's love in Christ stretches so deep and so wide that it permeates every wounded place in our hearts and in our world. Our hatred is met with love. Our cruelty is met with compassion. Our sins and our trespasses are met with forgiveness. God's love is greater than anything you've ever done or could do. The good news of the gospel is about forgiveness. Forgive yourselves forgive others, and live in peace. Amen.
As ministers of Christ's peace, we turn to one another, sharing a sign of that peace. The peace of the Lord be with you.
This is such a wonderful group on the steps today. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. And we say good morning to everyone here in the sanctuary and everyone joining us online. And right now, everybody on the steps, say good morning to someone beside you. Good morning. 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 Good morning, Ruby. Oh, how wonderful. All right, I want to show you and tell you about something really interesting in our Bible. So first, near the front, in the part called the Hebrew Scriptures, or the Old Testament, listen to these words. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And then... This far into the Bible, listen to these words in the Christian scriptures. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. They're the same words, aren't they? Jesus used them in the Gospel of Matthew when he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? What's the most important thing to do in a life of faith? And he said, love God in those ways and love your neighbor as yourself. So we know that God loves us always, no matter what, and we are asked to love God back and to love other people. So we're going to do a prayer about that today. And this is a motion prayer. We talked last week about being able to pray in many, many ways. So here are the motions, if you can see me. When you hear these words, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, touch your heart, with all your soul, touch your heart, with all your might. That means your strength. So show how strong you are. And love the Lord your God with your mind. So heart, heart, strength, and mind. And then love your neighbor as yourself. It's a hand over your heart again. Please join us, and we'll all say amen together at the end. Ready? Okay. Dear God, we are so grateful that you love us. And we pray to love you with all our heart, motion, with all our soul, with all our might, and with all our mind. And we pray to love our neighbors as ourselves today and every day. We pray in the name of Jesus, your Son, and our teacher, and we all say, Amen. Oh, man, wonderful. If you are singing in the Bel Canto Choir, please stay on the steps, and the rest of us get to be part of the audience and hear them.
Let's pray together the prayer for illumination printed in the bulletin. Lord, may your holy word be for us the seed of new possibilities that blossoms in ways we cannot yet imagine. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is Mark 8, 31 to 37. It's on page 38 in the New Testament in the Pew Bible. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Listen to the voice of the Spirit speaking to the church. Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from the triune God. Amen. I am what is um, sometimes referred to as a late bloomer, which is just a polite way of calling me an early screw up, I think. <laughs> um, I, I didn't actually graduate college till I was 36, which means in the late 80s and early 90s, when others my age were changing majors and pledging sororities, I was nurturing a not insignificant drug and alcohol habit. And this is why, in my 30s and 40s, I was, after I'd gotten sober, I was so driven to prove myself uh, because I believed that that was the solution to the problem of having been an early screw up. And then in 2004, when I had two preschoolers at home uh, and was also trying to finish my thesis at CU Boulder so I could graduate summa cum laude, which was very important for my solution, uh, at the time it really mattered to me, I was relentless at this time in my life. I was single-minded. I was absolutely unstoppable, which is why one day at school when my stomach hurt and I felt unwell, I didn't choose to go home and go to bed. I chose to just push through until I finally became, it finally became impossible to pretend that I was not very sick. Uh, and I waited too long. Uh, because on the drive home, I felt increasingly very sick until eventually I passed out while still driving. Thank God it happened when I was about to pull into our driveway and not while I was on the highway. So rather than plowing down other motorists, I just plowed down the neighbor's mailboxes uh, before my car stopped in their flower bed. And when I came to uh, gain consciousness, uh, I opened the driver's door and then proceeded to pass out in a snowbank uh, between the neighbor's yard and my Honda uh, for like, I don't know, a little wintry nap or something. Uh, and the next time I came to, there were paramedics standing over me and the very first thing out of my mouth was, I'm not drunk. <clears throat> I had worked so hard to prove I wasn't the sloppy drunk I used to be, but in doing so, I just found myself passed out in the neighbor's yard just like I used to be. Uh, 
And at the hospital, hours later, when the ER doc came in with the results of my blood work, he said there wasn't anything wrong with me besides having the flu and refusing to rest. But Mrs. Boltzweber, uh, the Mrs. Boltzweber, <laughs> um, but, but Mrs. Boltzweber, he added, when you're that sick, you should go home and lay down. And that little piece of advice cost my family $1,000 we did not have. The point being, uh, my solution to the problem of having squandered years of my life to addiction was to just then become addicted to proving myself, and then that solution turned into its own problem, and well, that's usually how the cycle goes. In our gospel text for today, Jesus says that those who wish to follow him must deny themselves and take up their cross, and those who wish to save their life must lose it. Not to put too fine a point on it, but these are just the kinds of messages that would never make Jesus an influencer today. Uh, he'd never get more than his 12 followers these days with that kind of branding. I mean, I feel like I speak for all of us when I say what we want is the, se the three secrets every celebrity knows about getting rid of cellulite or six steps to becoming a more powerful in the boardroom or the top 10 ways to make up for being a young addict. But no, Jesus gives us deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him and lose your life if you wanna save it. Maybe like you, I struggle with how this denying ourselves thing is good news. And not just because of how that verse about picking up your cross has been perverted into messages like deny your queerness, pick up your cross of heterosexuality and follow him, or deny your dignity and pick up your cross of continued domestic abuse and follow him. I mean, yeah, there is all that, but the reason deny yourself feels like bad news to me is because I do not want to deny myself. It's as simple as that. I like calling the shots, and uh, for most of my life, I've relied pretty heavily on me-based solutions to all of my me-based problems, and, and even when my solutions don't work, at least they're mine. And here Jesus is wanting to take that from me, like he can't see the value in my entrepreneurial life management skills. <laughs> but the truth is, as much as I want to be a totally autonomous, self-contained entity who doesn't need to lay down when she is sick, uh, I also am exhausted and very much want to scream the words, I could use some help here into my pillow so that, you know, I get it out of my system, but also no one hears me and God forbid thinks I need help. But I do. Uh, I could use some rest and some help because I'm tired of trying to be enough of everything. So recently, I've been wondering if when Jesus says, deny yourself and follow me, that maybe it's not about ensuring his followers are doormats. Maybe he's inviting us to deny the part of us that wants to see itself as separate from God and others. Deny the part of ourself that believes that spirituality should be a suffering avoidance program. Deny the self that always creates a list of demands. Deny the self that is so turned in on itself it cannot see much of anything beyond itself. Deny the self that says really horrible things to you about you. Deny the self that pretends that you never need help. There are parts of me that really should be deplatformed. <laughs> because in the end, that is one aspect of the whole death and resurrection thing that Jesus promises us the death of the false self. But the death of the false self doesn't feel good. In fact, Richard Rohr once wrote that holiness never feels like holiness. It, it just feels like you're dying. I think he might have been reading our text for today when he wrote that. But no matter how painful, when the unhealthy ideas and habits and identities we rely on are taken away from us, it just makes more space for that which is actually real and actually holy. And maybe this is what Lent is about. Not giving up chocolate, but giving up on the things that, let's be honest, weren't working anyhow. So if you're faced with your own limitations in your own life right now, if, if you are exhausted by our achievement culture, if your me-based solutions to your me-based problems keep failing you, 
Christian, know this. There is no shame in that. Not really. I mean, not with the kind of God we have. Because as St. Paul said, God's strength is perfected in your weakness. Denying yourself might be as simple as letting yourself off the hook for having to be God. So every time we find ourselves passed out in our own version of a snowbank next to the neighbor's flower bed, every time our me-based solutions to our me-based problems fail us, just know this. It is in the tombs of our self-manufactured darknesses that God always shines brightest. I mean, it's basically his job. So we offer no me-based solutions here. And you know what we have to offer instead is divine foolishness, really. The kind that says that if you want to save your life, you must lose it. And if you lose your life, you'll find it. Because as St. Paul kind of said, the cross is foolishness to those whose own solutions are still working for them. But to the weak and the cynical and the socially awkward and the exhausted, to the divorced and the unemployed and the alcoholics, in other words, to all who are in need of help and rest, Christ crucified, the foolishness of God is life in a way that our own solutions can never be, in a way that more status and more degrees and more financial security can never be, in a way that proving ourselves and people-pleasing and Pilates can never be. In closing, something came to me very late yesterday, so this is not a fully formed idea. <laughs> um, but I'm going to offer it anyway. Uh, when Jesus says, deny ourselves, pick up our crosses and follow him, I've always focused on what a bummer the self-denial and cross-carrying part was. Uh, and never thought much about the following him thing. But maybe it doesn't mean he's leaving us to a life of struggle and suffering and having to figure everything out for ourselves. Because if he says, follow me, it must mean he's guiding the way so maybe we can stop feeling like we need to. Like, it's almost like we're going to his house but we're in separate cars and he says, hey, no need to enter it in Google Maps, just follow me. Since he says we should follow him, does it not mean that he is right in the front? Like, He's always going before us. He's always in pole position. And we get to spiritually just draft off of him. That's the rest and the help that we need. It's found in the spiritual slipstream of following Jesus, the one who says, come to me all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest, especially if you have the flu. <laughs> the one who never tires of being our help in times of trouble, the one in whom we can rest and just try less hard for once. Amen.
We are thankful for your support of the ministries of this church. And today we're highlighting our reparations royalty program. Since September of 2022, Montview has piloted this program, which is the practice of valuing the spirituals of enslaved Africans to American worship and song. Over the past year and a half, our reparations royalty fund has grown to $12,000. In September 2023, our Worship Music and the Arts Committee began considering to which organization our first reparation payment would be made. After much consideration and in conjunction with community leaders, the committee felt called to make a reparation payment of $12,000 to Hope Center. Hope Center, a 62-year-old nonprofit organization, provides early childhood education to predominantly low-income African-American preschool-aged children in Northeast Denver. The center seeks to ensure that its scholars are school-ready, well-rounded students as they go off to elementary school. The reparation royalty payment will be made to the Hope Center to elevate music in its regular school programs by enhancing the curriculum with music activities on a weekly basis. Montview's reparation will provide for the purchase of a keyboard and other materials for the classroom, as well as create a stipend to pay local artists to work with the scholars and teachers at the Hope Center. We are so grateful to the Hope Center for their partnership in our Reparations Royalty Pilot Program. The ministries of this congregation are made possible by the many ways that you give your gifts. You can make an offering to this church online with the QR code in your bulletin, and there are collection boxes at the exits. Another way to get connected in this faith community is to take the pads that are on the aisles of your pews, sign your name, pass it down and back, and this way we can get to know one another by name and, and get to know one another. Now, in body or spirit, would you please rise for the, for the prayer of dedication? God, you have so greatly loved us, long sought us, and mercifully redeemed us. Give us this, that in everything we may yield ourselves, our wills, and our works, a continual thank offering to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. seated. Let us continue in prayer. God of dust and ashes, God of breath and life, breathe your love into us. With the rhythm of prayer, remind us that when we cry out for you, you promise to never leave us alone. When your people suffer with grief, loneliness or despair, bring them the bread of life. Bring us the blessing of grace, the grace that sustains us through dark nights and promises hope for the coming of the light. When your people struggle with the impact of violence, injustice, scarcity, and war, provide them with peace. 
provide us with inner peace and outer peace. Peace that radiates from heart to heart and body to body and country to country. Reconcile us to one another so that we may breathe in your gift of love. Today, we bring our prayers to you, emptying our minds of all that troubles us. We lay down our worries, praying for ourselves and for those among us who suffer and struggle, including those in the Montview community and around the globe. But even as we cry out for your help, we are grateful for the abundant daily blessings that surround us. The simplicity of the sunshine that satiates our souls and the snow that quenches the earth can bring us to our knees and remind us again that you are the breath of life. Be with us today as we pray together the prayer that was taught to us by Jesus, the divine son of your holy presence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now would you please rise in body or in spirit and join in the closing hymn number 728 in your hymnal.
Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary. Come to me, all of you who work so hard, who try so hard, who are so tired. Come to me. Friends, remember that God is with us. God is always available to you so that the Spirit might refresh and renew and build you up for the work that we do in the world. Now may the God of grace, the one who is able to do exceedingly more than we can think or even imagine, to the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen.